Hello guys and welcome to day two of NGB's Game of the Year discussions. Mm. I am Ben and I'm joined by Johnny. I'm back. He is indeed. So are you. Guess who's back. Back yeah. again. Johnny's back. Tell a friend. Uh, as we talk about the best free games of 2017. So if you have a PS Plus or an Xbox Live Gold subscription, you have had a chance at some point in 2017 to own... Well, free with a little asterisk next to it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like free... free for, the for, premium, no, not for premium. a nominal fee. Yeah, yeah, like the, the games that you will have had with your subscription. Sure, free, I'd like to clarify. Free and in inverted commas. Yeah, 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 there we go. We'll, That's fine. Yeah, okay, I'm happy. So, um, this is a category that we sort of discussed last year. We said, right, we'll bring it in because it's you know people do tend to overlook games when they get them for free because they're like, or you know, get them as part of a subscription. It's like, oh, I'm not going to bother with that. Yeah, unless you. Unless you don't necessarily spend a lot on games, um, and you get them, you think, "Oh, give that a go." And like, there've been some genuine gems, I think. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, over the past year, one real surprise that is the uh, well, it's the winner. Yes, yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Um, so the the ones that we've got here, we've got until dawn. Um, Andy voted for until dawn. Sure. Um, he has said somewhere. Where are you, Andy? Uh, he's put it on a Google document, which... Uh, he's I, so very awkward. Yeah, I, yeah. I have sent it to email, he's put it in a Google doc. Uh, it's very awkward, which, you know, Andy. Is, is there we go. Awkward beacon, that's he what is. I call him. Uh, Until Dawn, terrifying and brilliant in equal measure. Until Dawn, cemented supermassive games as big hit as an interactive storytelling. A bona fide classic that's easily the best thing to hit PS Plus in 2017. Yeah. I think he just put that last line in there to piss me off. Because <laughs> he, he knew exactly where my vote was going to be going. Um, who else voted for stuff? We've got... Um, Day of the Tentacle Remastered was uh, was one for Nick. Sure, sure. Uh, that's a great game. Yeah. Like, Day of the Tentacle is brilliant. Uh, I think I think that was a PS Plus one, actually. Um, I, think I missed that one, yeah. It might have been. Um, but either way, I know I've I know it was definitely free on, on a service. Okay. Um, Deb said Tearaway Unfolded. Sure, uh, sure. Tearaway is pretty good. Uh, it came out on the Vita, and then they re-released it for the PS4. Okay. With PS4 exclusive features. Fancy, fancy. Um, let's have a look. Uh, you said Just Cause 3. I said Just Cause 3. Yeah. It's, a, it's <laughs> I just like Just Cause 3. It's brilliant. It's just really silly. It doesn't run... I mean, it didn't run great for a long time. I think they've patched a lot of it now and sorted yeah. it out. But uh, it's just a very silly game, and uh, I had a lot of fun playing. Just, just not even doing the missions, just fucking about. Yeah, uh, it's one of those games. It's like, um, it's like GTA Five, but it's not trying to be as cool. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it doesn't really give a shit. And no, it's it doesn't like, care. I, I will always remember the uh, the meetings that I had around Just Cause Three at Gamescom one year. Yeah, I was talking to the game designer, um, the lead designer in it, and he was just saying, "Yeah, like you drive a car off a cliff and you get out of the car." And it hits something and it explodes. Yeah. Like, why? Just cause. Yeah. Do a bit of hand gliding out of a car. Yeah, just cause. Just car surfing. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that. I think <laughs> I think the fact that they caused it, they called it just cause. Yeah. Um, I, I think they might have well have just caused it, called it, like, just cause. Yeah. Just because, because that was what happened. Absolutely. Um, and yeah, just cause three is brilliant. Yeah, yeah, it's and, not. Uh, yeah. A very, very fun game. I'd actually forgotten that was free on PS Plus. Um, I think it's because it I'd already had it. But yes. Um, yeah, Just Cause 3 is really good. Yeah. Um, Robin said Oxenfree. All right. Uh, this one was a real surprise. I was expecting a fairly innocuous teen adventure game, but what you get with Oxenfree is a creepy, deep, mystery, uh, sorry, creepy, deep mystery story yeah. that contains a lot of different layers. Your actions uh-huh. shape the game too, and with a killer electro soundtrack, multiple endings, and interesting changes on multiple playthroughs, this is a ghost story that will keep you hooked. Okay. Um, Oxenfree at the minute, I think, is free on GOG on the PC. Oh, really? So I might give that a go. Okay. Um, I'd forgotten about that. Um, I meant to pick that up earlier, actually. But uh, um, biggest, best free game, best free game. Um, Kieran went with a good one. Right, hear me. Um, Typewriter. Why have I not heard of Typewriter? So this was on PS Plus. Okay. Um, it was one of those ones that wasn't necessarily advertised, but you just kind of add it to your library if you see it in there. Sure. Um, so he said, whilst core gaming Typewriter sums, uh, sums to a fairly basic platformer, the way in which it presents... The way in which it's presented is something of a marvel. Mm. I'm incredibly biased when it comes to anything that dips into the world of design, but Typewriter does it in such a way that's incredibly captivating. For the most part, Typewriter is a relaxing platform with puzzles that don't really rely on too much of the old brain juice, but it's filled with pieces of information to the past practices of typography and design, all of which are generally interest, genuinely interesting to read. 
Those without interest in the design world may very well find the whole game to be boring, but this is the first time I've read and wanted to read the information collected within the game. Maybe it's a sign of my age, but in a sea of games that are designed to grab your attention by the balls, Type Riders' relaxed and informative gameplay design really appealed to me and lent an increased appreciation for typographical design to boot. Sounds pretty fan- fancy. Sold. I'm, uh, I'm going to check that out. I've yeah. got. Uh, I think it's in my library. I'll, I need to check it out. Right. Um, Matty G, Mr. Golding. What's he done? Uh, he went with That's You. That's a great game. That's a good shout. Yeah. Um, I love that. We've we had a lot of fun with That's You. Yeah. I drew a penis. You, um, you drew not just a penis. I, I drew the penis. It was fucking anatomically uh, well dip, oh, terrifying. I mean, I they're believe. all different, of course. But, you know. <laughs> Um, but the winner of our best free game category is, of course, yeah. Metal Gear Solid Five. Sure. Phantom Pain. Um, I mean, I don't think we could have not given it to this, given that it was our game of the year. The previous year? No, oh, uh, 2015. Yeah. 15, yeah. It was 2015's game of the year. Yeah. Um, and the best game to come out in 2015, it was free this year if you had a PS Plus subscription. Yeah. I don't think it was the best game of 2015. It was, shit but face. I mean, mm, I, have, I have many thoughts. Man, I think Rocket League's better than Metal Gear Solid. Well, firstly, it fucking is. <laughs> I mean, it's fucking not. Um, so yeah, Metal Gear Solid Five: Phantom Pain came to PS Plus. It did. This year. It's a bit of surprise. Surprised a lot of people. Yeah. Um, I was I was genuinely surprised. You're kicking the microphone stand. Am I? Yeah. Sorry, microphone stand. Yeah. It's nothing personal. <laughs> um, so if, yeah, if, if you're hearing bangs, it's because Johnny's kicking the stand. Um. <laughs> Metal Gear Solid Five. Yeah, we'll get we'll get back to the video game. <laughs> um, it's really good. It's, I mean, it's fine. I mean, gameplay wise, gameplay wise, it's fucking brilliant. Yes, but the story, the sound design, fucking mess. Sound design. Yeah. Why is the sound design a mess? I'll fucking tell you, mate. Because you know that fucking codec thing Snake has. Yeah. That overlaps the dialogue in the game. That annoys the fuck out of me. Well, it's, it's yeah, overlapping. Happen. Yeah, but I don't want what would happen in real life. I want a fucking game. Let's fucking sort it. Stagger the fucking audio. And also, when you die, and he goes, Snag, Snag, Snag! Right, hear that more than twice in a row. Does your fucking head in. Be, right. get, good. <laughs> get good. Get good. So, for those reasons, and the story is just a fucking spaghetti junction of a mess. Yeah. <sighs> Not a game of the year. But uh, anyway. Fuck you. That's, yeah. I, I love Metal Gear Solid 5. This is why I think Metal Gear Survive could be quite good, because it doesn't appear to have a plot, which could do it a favour. Because the <laughs> gameplay is great, but the plot's fucking awful. So I'm, if you get I'm, rid of the plot bit... I'm actually really interested to see what the reaction to Survive is. Because, I'm interested like, in it. A lot of people have said that the best thing about Metal Gear Solid 5 was the gameplay. Yeah. And this is all gameplay. So yeah, exactly. It's like, just because Kojima's not at the helm, does that mean you're going to slate it? Yeah. It's like, yeah, we'll see what happens. If they stagger the audio as well, mate, that'll be fucking perfect. Stagger the audio. Get rid of Fuck that. Fuck As well. No, you're a dick. Um, so anyway, best free game, Metal Gear Solid 5, The Phantom Pain. Bravo. Um... It couldn't have been anything else. Um, so, we will move on to yep. our best surprise. Okay. It's the biggest surprise of 20, uh, 2017. Yep. Um, somewhat bizarrely, yeah. Mr. Nintendo, Andy Beacon... I know him. Uh, he went with the biggest surprise was the Switch. He said, oh, um, in what context? So he said the popularity of the Switch and the resurgence of Nintendo. Yeah. Um, he said, after the Wii U, most people wrote Nintendo off as done for. Initial reveal of the Switch did little to curtail that. More fool than naysayers, the Switch has gone on to become one of the fastest... Fool than naysayers. <laughs> Fucking hell, Beacon. <laughs> um, the Switch has gone on to become one of the fastest selling tech products of 2017, the most desirable Christmas present, and has propelled Nintendo into back into the gaming limelight. Yeah. I think he's being a little bit... Little bit... Uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Beacon. He's being very beacon. <laughs> yeah. Um, he, I, I think he's wrong because I don't. I think by the time the Switch had been kind of established what it was and what was coming out for it, I think most people were like, this is going to be pretty good. I distinctly remember that we had yeah. a con- We sat down in Matt's living room after the Switch got announced yeah. and we did a podcast that probably listening back to it now was a fucking mess. Um, <laughs> I mean like this one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but we went, we, you know, we sat there and we said, right, the Switch reveal trailer, yeah. it basically it set out, right, okay, this is a two-minute trailer, yeah. and this is what it is, it's a handheld, you put it in this thing, and it goes on your telly, yeah. and then when you're done with it, you take it out, and you go and have a walk, yeah. and you can play it there. 
That's all they needed to do. They got the messaging absolutely spot fucking on yeah. with the Switch. I don't think there were many naysayers no. about the Switch. One knew what it was. I was like, that sounds great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Give me some of that. I mean, the Wii U was a fucking shit show. I mean, it was. And we will stand by that because <laughs> the Wii U is, is shit. And obviously right? Nintendo know that as well because they move so far away from it. I mean, they're re-releasing everything. Exactly, yeah. Everything that was out on the Wii U now, with the exception of Smash Brothers, I think, that everybody really wanted, is out or is coming to the Wii U. Hyrule Warriors, I suppose. Everything that everybody wanted. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously we've had Mario. um, Mario 3D World, I suppose, isn't out on the Switch. I don't think we need it either now we've got Odyssey. But there's a lot of things that are on the Switch that are now coming to, you know, that were on the Wii U that are coming to the Switch. Yes. And I think the biggest standout for that was Bayonetta and Bayonetta 2. Yep. Um, and that's now come in, so. Yep, yep. There we go. Um, but the biggest surprise, um, Robin suggested uh, Life is Strange. Sure. Um, Before the Storm, I believe it's called. It is. I've I've played it. I should probably know this. Yeah. Um. Yeah, uh, Robin suggested that because, if I can find his uh, his email, um, main surprise with Before the Storm is that it didn't shit all over the legacy of the first game. The original game is one of my favourite titles of recent years, and despite being developed by a completely different studio, Before the Storm captures the same teenage angst and heart that was so central to Life is Strange, providing a fascinating backstory for the events of the first series. I've yet to finish Before the Storm, right? because I'm waiting basically for everything to, to be out before I... I play it. Sure. Um, and the other thing is, I really want to play it with the wife because she loved the first game. Like, yeah. We, we sat and played it. I played it. She watched it like a TV show. Okay. And she fucking loved it. Yeah. Um, and I'm wondering how it's going to work with the without the time travel mechanic that's in the first game. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it seems to be pretty good. Um, you know, it seems to be really good. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm really pleased with, you know, the fact that that's... That's surprised Robin in the way that it has. Yeah. Um, other games that have been voted for um, Fortnite, Fortnite Battle Royale. Fortnite's pretty great. Um, like that. I think it was uh, Nico said that Fortnite was his best surprise. Yeah. Because um, having heard the buzz around PUBG and being a loyal PS4 user, when I was told that Fortnite was similar and free, I figured why not give it a shot. Um, that was the first step in getting into a super fun yet tactical battle royale style game. Yeah, Fortnite's constant evolving as well as while it does have paid modes, they need to make money. The core of the game is free and amazing. Yeah, and it's interesting that Nico says that because he's saying that the core of the game is free. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just the battle royale mode that's free. Yes. So I think the fact that they've said, you know, he said that the core of the game is free. It's interesting to me to for people to relate now Fortnite just to the battle royale mode. Yeah, rather than the game Fortnite that came out before that. Yes, and exists on its own. Yeah, that, yeah. I mean that's yeah. that's still in early access. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, that's completely fair enough there. Um, let's have a look. Who else has given us a big surprise? Um, Did I see the surge somewhere? Yeah. So, um, Matt Smale suggested The Surge. All right. That's the one that's like the... Is that the Dark Souls in space? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, not really said too much about it, but I know Andy had a uh, Andy had a good time with The Surge. Yeah. Um, I think there was a problem where there was a couple of bugs in it that, that could prevent people from progressing. All right. But, yeah, I think that seems to be one. Again, I'm not the biggest fan of, of Dark Souls or the From series, so... Um, but it's yeah. winner time, baby. It's winner time. Yeah. Winner, winner, chicken dinner time. Uh, it's not PUBG. It's Although not. Charles did vote for PUBG because okay. um, it just came out of fucking nowhere. Sure. Um, Mario plus Rabbids, Kingdom Battle. Yeah. Now, this is a surprise in two ways. First off, this game got leaked in, I think it was around January time. Um, yeah, I I thought it was later than that. Um, I know it got leaked before E3. Yeah, because that was when it got. Because that was when those screens were there, wasn't it? And it was. Uh, yeah, so there, there was like an there was like an internal presentation. Yeah, that got leaked yeah. with the screens of Mario holding a gun. Yes, um, with the rabbits in the background, and everyone looked at it and went, "What the fuck is this? You've ruined Mario, lads." Yeah, mm. but it came out, and it's really good. It's great. It's like an XCOM light tactical shooter. It's like a very good nine out of ten. Uh, new. T- 
I mean, it's, it's a real bold move for Mario. Oh, yeah. Because, like, obviously Mario, there's been quite a breadth of uh, different games. He's been in, you know, RPGs and puzzle games and stuff. Yeah. There's never been a fucking strategy game like that before for Mario. No. So it's a new uh, string to his bow, and it works out <laughs> really well. It's a, it's a strong 9 out of 10, really involving strategy game. Mm-hmm. Hilarious as well. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I, I don't like the rabbits. Um, I had no opinion on them before. I think they they do quite well. They're like the minions. They're like the original minions in this. <laughs> the original minions. Yeah. Because they were around before minions, were Before they? they sold out. Um, well, no, but rabbits predate minions, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I, oh, sorry, I, I see what you meant. I thought you meant, like, as in, like, there were two batches of minions. Like, you liked you liked the original minions, not like the rabbits are like the original minions. I have no idea what you're talking no, about. No, I don't either. Okay. Um, but, yeah, like, let's, um, you know, let, let's sort of talk about Mario Rabbids a little bit more, because I... I it's, a, it's wonderful. I, I absolutely do not know why this game works. No. But it does, and yes. it's great. It's, it's um I think you you pretty much summed it up to be honest. In um, when you you emailed me back, you said uh, legitimately thought this would be a boring mess. Yeah. But instead, found a hilarious and incredibly accessible strategy game. Yeah. It didn't seem to suit that kind of world at all. Like a kind of a strategy game like XCOM. I was like, it just doesn't fit that right. like the bright, colourful uh, vibe. But yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Turns out it's, it does. Yeah, it's really yeah. good. <laughs> um, absolutely love it. Um, and I I can't begin to praise it enough i think even matt um you know golden voted for it as his as his surprise yeah um he said even though i haven't got a switch when i played it a year ago and it was amazing he loved it um and i think that convinced him that he, he needs to get a switch yeah um who would have thought that a, a rabbits game would be a system seller i think because when you look at the upcoming schedule for what was coming out on switch in its uh debut year it was obviously the big ones looking forward like you know zelda mario odyssey and then there's this other Mario game that you wouldn't have thought would have uh, been an essential exclusive. Yeah. It very much is essential. I mean, it turns exclusive. out it is. You've it's got a Switch, get a Mario Rabbit. Like, yeah. It's really good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that's our uh, best surprise, yep. is Mario plus Rabbit's Kingdom Battle. A worthy um, winner. Yeah, it's also got a new... Uh, it's also got the Versus mode in there as well now. They've new Versus mode's patched in, yeah. They've supported it after the fact quite well. Yeah. Um, uh, the lad who made it uh, cried uh, when it was did. announced. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He I'm tweeted a- me as well. Did he? Yeah, he did. Aww. Not like out of nowhere. I tweeted him first <laughs> and he replied. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, I think um, it just sort of shows how how special that is. Yeah. Um, so we'll move on to uh, the final topic for today um, before we move tomorrow into our best of the rest yep. categories. Sure. Um, Give it to me. So most anticipated game... <sighs> Of 2018. Ooh. Now, some of these, I don't think, are coming out in 2018. No, I think the one I have said uh, has no release date at all. Not even a fucking year. No. So it could not be next year. So let's talk about that one first off. We're hitting it straight off? Yeah. All uh, right. You you say Death Stranding. I have said Death Stranding, Ben. Um, probably for different reasons that I would have said it. Um, the reason <laughs> I've not said that this is one of my most anticipated games of next year is quite simply because I don't think it's coming out next year. Yep. Um, that's a fair assessment yeah yeah. because I you know I've been a fan of Kojima's for a while and yeah. his games tend not to come out when he wants them to no or, when, or be when, coherent when his fans want them to <laughs> <laughs> he needs an editor yeah. he, he fucking needs an editor yeah um, but yeah Death Stranding why is this your most anticipated game Jonathan the problem with video games is <laughs> they are basically just they're just a form of media they're like films they're like albums you consume them and I think if I were Kojima, and I'm not, but if I was, I would have basically held everything back until like a month before and then gone, bang, it is my new game. <laughs> because the problem he's got with it is with these ridiculous trailers that are giving so little away, no one knows what the game even is yet, just like some mad shit with Mads Mikkelsen and the lad from Walking Dead in it. Like, it's just, it's too much hype. And when it does come out, nothing, nothing is worth that amount of hype. That's a problem. Video games are fun. They're a nice little attraction. They're not like you can't build. You can't build like two years of hype for something and it live up to it. It's not possible. So even if it's a good game, it's fucked. Basically, it's absolutely fucked. <coughs> I mean, this has been summed up pretty much perfectly by me your, just your, now. No, in your initial email back to me. What did I put when you said Death Stranding because it's going to be a fucking car crash? <laughs> so. 
I mean, the thing is, I was in the audience. I was sat in the auditorium yeah. when Kojima walked out down his fucking Michael Jackson light steps yep. at the Sony conference yep. where he walked too quickly and, <laughs> and the light ended up behind him. Um, but I was in that audience and he showed that Death Stranding trailer and yeah. my jaw was practically on the floor. But I was sat there going, what is it? What the fuck is this? Yeah. Like, it looks incredible. Um, I mean, does it? I mean... Oh, like, but you mean technically? Yeah, per- purely visually graphic. Yeah, that's looks great, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it looks incredible, and yeah, yeah. you know, there's um, there's a good uh, there's a good story in um, in Danny O'Dwyer's latest documentary All right. um, for Horizon Zero Dawn. Yeah, yeah. Because obviously it's using the Desmer engine, right? And basically, the guy in there says, right, well, you know, we sat there with a, you know, fifty page or fifty five hundred page, not fifty five hundred page, like five hundred page uh, PowerPoint presentation. Yeah. With you know, for Kojima about why we think he should use our engine. Yeah. And then at the end of it, we just gave him a box with a USB stick in that said, there's our source code. Yeah. So it's like, okay, so they really wanted him to use that engine and he's pushed it like... Okay. He, he's making something special. Yeah. Because that, you know, fucking Death Stranding trailer, like, technically looks amazing. And I hope they can keep it. I really hope they can keep it up. But, but here's my point, Ben. Here's my point, right? Go back to... um it was E3 last year. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why I asked that. It's E3 last year. When uh, Xbox were announcing the Xbox One X. Yep. And Nintendo announced Mario... Well, they didn't announce it, but like you know, they brought some more shit about Mario Odyssey. Yep. Xbox, like fucking, look at all our teraflops, look at our mad specs. Yeah. Everyone was like, seems fine. Nintendo were like... You can put your hat on, on the a frog. They said, <laughs> Nintendo were like, here's some fucking brilliant imaginative gameplay. Everyone was like, it's fucking mad. So people, I mean, some people do care about specs, but widely people care about gameplay. No, I, I get that. Like, people I, want games, Ben. They don't want specs. Anyway, let's let's stop talking about that <laughs> because you've just gone off on one. Um, that was all relevant. Fuck you. <coughs> so what's next? Robin said his most anticipated game. Yeah, is Shenmue Three. Sure. sure. Um, again, probably one that's not coming out next year. No. Uh, he said it most likely still won't launch next year and probably will be late again. But Shenmue Three. Yeah. I've been waiting over sixteen years for this game. What's another year? Now while we wait, can we have Shenmue 1 and 2 HD? Mm. I'd like Shenmue 1 and 2 HD, because I've never fucking played them. So um, you have to be because I didn't have a Dreamcast. So. No, same. No, um, so yeah. So I've, I've got um, I've got my order for Shenmue 3, and I kick-started it. Yeah. I'm, I've thought to myself, it's going to be about four years. I've got time to play Shenmue 1 and 2 in that time. Yeah. Um, Shenmue 2, oh, Shenmue's mental, from what I can what I can ascertain. Yeah. It's, it's, it was ahead of its time. Okay. All right. Um... Most what? anticipated game for Nico. Oh, that's good. Is uh, is God of War four? Yeah, yeah. Or God of War. God of four. No, it's just called God of War. It's God of four. It's called God of War. All right. It's God of Dad of War. It's God of four to me. Mm, all right. Yeah. Um, the exciting to see my favourite Spartans almost unbearable. Having just seen more gameplay at PSX, I'm buzzing at the thought of more ultra violence yeah. from the former God of War and now his son. Well, a violence with a heart of gold. <laughs> Because he's not just an angry man he's, anymore. He's ripping someone's head off, but he's doing it with But he's love. doing it for his son. <laughs> um, yeah, it looks amazing, actually. It does. I'm down for God of War, yeah. Um, yeah, the, the, again, E3 last year, we had a we had a behind-closed-doors presentation of, of God of War, and they took a slightly different path through the uh, the demo that showed at the press conference, yep. which was just... I mean, again, technically, it looks incredible. Mm-hmm. Um the rumour is it's going to be releasing sooner than most people might think. Yeah, there was the uh, PlayStation Store error, wasn't yeah, there? Yeah, it's in March, yeah. they said, yeah. uh, which could be quite interesting. Yeah. Um, we are going to now go into... It was quite a close one, this one, actually. All right. Um, the two games that, that popped up the most sure. uh, were Red Dead Redemption 2. Yeah. Um, I think Matt just basically said, give me GTA on horses. Yeah. Um, which, you know... <laughs> That was essentially what the first one was. Um, and the one that's won... Um, I mean, we'll talk about Red Dead a little bit quickly. Hit me. I, I loved what I played of the first one. Oh, well, Red Dead Redemption. Redemption, because the first Red Dead Revolver was... Uh, yeah, it was all right. It's strange that's grown into what this is now. Yeah. Yeah, because it wasn't great. No. So um, but yeah, Red Dead Redemption was, was pretty good. Um, yeah. Again, I've still not finished it. Yeah. Um, I probably should at some point. Yeah. I think it's on backwards compatibility, so I might... It is, because, it, it, yeah, it, it did go backwards compatible, because yeah. it uh, basically went mental when it happened. Mm. Um, 
One that actually I'm, I'm going to mention quickly. Uh, most anticipated game of 2018, Somerville. Hit me. Um, Kieran's mentioned this one. There's plenty to look forward to next year, but uh, uh, give me a game by an ex-Playdead developer steeped in mystery and caked in a Stranger Things cross limbo glazing, and you're on to a winner. Yeah. Um, technically, Somerville hasn't been announced as a 2018 title, so I'm going out on a whim here. If it falls to 2019, please direct all messages of complaint to Ben Ward. Uh, but boy, oh boy, does it tick all the boxes. The teaser released earlier in the year shows very little, but gives a glimpse of just how stunning the game looks. It's the somewhat stalkerish nature of Twitter that has me wholly hyped up, though, as I've been checking out some snippets of gameplay during its development. Somerville has a nod to an 80s and 90s sci-fi with an overarching air of mystery that I really can't wait to experience. Mm-hmm. I've not seen anything about this game. It's 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 one that has completely passed me by. I it's just some eighty singer to me. <coughs> hmm. Yeah. Um. So there's that one, but the winner is Spider Man. Pow pow. Um. Spider Man PS4. Um. Who we got here? So Charles has said uh, the footage that he's seen has him beyond hyped, which absolutely like I I'm fully with him on that. Yeah. Um. I personally think that. You know that's going to be up there next year with in terms of game of the year because I think Insomniac are really stretching in terms of you know their their level of skill. Yeah, um, they're they're just an incredible developer. Like they've, I think the thing is with um, with some of the stuff they've done. Obviously, they did the Resistance franchise on the PS3. Yeah. Um, that went downhill a little bit, but they, they've got the technical knowledge, they've got the technical know-how to do it. I actually really enjoyed Sunset Overdrive for what it was as well. Mm. Um, I know a lot of people had problems with that game, but for what it was, it was fine. I think problems with the, the kind of style and tone of it rather than the gameplay. Yeah, and yeah. I think Insomniac, you know, give them give them a, a, a canon that they can work with. Yeah. Um, you know, give them a, a franchise that, you know, they can't necessarily deviate from all that much. Yeah. And you're on to a winner. Sure. Um, Spider-Man's the best superhero, isn't he, as well? Yeah, I'd probably say that. Yeah, it's a good character to work with. Yeah, so I think... Um, He's a very video gamey character. Yeah. Um, so Gary has said uh, that, you know, being a diehard Spider-Man fan and a huge fan of the brilliant dev team at Insomniac, I was blown away by the gameplay reveal that came out of E3 2017 um, and super excited to see more of the game next year. While the game isn't based on the Spider-Man material we've already seen and has its own story and design, it still sticks to the ethos of who Peter Parker and Spider-Man is. Yeah. Spider-Man for the PS4 is shaping it to be incredible and I, for one, can't wait Wholeheartedly agree. Yeah, um, I was sat next to Gary again, same auditorium uh, for that Sony conference. Yeah, we were sat in that audience together, and the Marvel logo came up on the screen. Yeah, and we lost our fucking minds. <laughs> it was amazing. Like everybody around us was just going mental. And this is this is an audience of like people who do this for a living. Yeah, yeah. and people like us that don't do it for a living but get lucky when it comes to things like this. Yeah, and we were sat there. Everybody was going mental. Yeah. Because the rumours leading up to it were that it was going to be a Sucker Punch game. Yeah. You know, that was their next franchise. That was their next game that they were working on the next title. Yeah. Um, but for it to come out and be an Insomniac game, it just, you know, flashed upon the screen with Insomniac and then it flashed up with Marvel and everyone just went, holy shit. Yeah. And it was the perfect reveal. Um, absolutely love it. And I, I, this is my most anticipated game. Have we got a date for it? Uh, it's is 2018. It just- is there any more specific than that? Or we just got 2018 at the moment? Twenty eight, I think summer 2018, I All think. Right, or was okay. it spring? It, it's been given a time frame. Right, right, okay. So it's kind of coming out. It's definitely coming out next year. Yeah. Um, and Sony won't let it come out until it's polished and, you know, until it's ready. No. Um, but I I can't see them letting it slip too far. No. Um, so, yeah, that is our most anticipated game of 2018, Spider-Man. Smashing. Um, and that's going to do us for today. Um, yeah, come back tomorrow. We're going to have uh, a brief discussion about the games that didn't quite make it onto the top ten, mm. um, and then we're going to go through the top ten uh, next two days. Sure. So we'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Toodaloo.